Got it. I'm leaving. You're leaving? Okay, For Christine, this beautiful we're place. able to figure it out. Okay. Well, I had much bigger, easier plans for this, but obviously it's not as easy because my computer is broken. Um, so give me a second to get everything. Done. And Ann George is probably working on getting in as well. Okay. Okay, I sent Ann George the meeting link, so hopefully she sees it. Um, hopefully she sees it. So a lot of you guys that are in here have done adoptions, so this isn't new. Um, so I think what will be beneficial is to maybe talk since we're recording about like beneficial topics that we talk about while we're on the phone. Um, and I'll just kind of go over like the gist of like what happens when I send you an application and then we can talk about like things that we talk about on the phone and then talk about like um, sending um, then like what we do once the adopter says like oh, I really like this cat kind of a thing. Um, nobody sent me any questions but I'm sure that there will be questions once I post a video of course. Um, so so yeah, for anybody who is watching this afterwards, once you get the, and I know that these ladies know, once you get, um, once your cat is posted available for adoption and they get an application, it comes to my email address. They are posted on our website. Um, I just found out actually, um, I haven't told everybody cause it's been a long week, but. I just found out how to post um, like little clips on our website, like videos. Um, they're kind of tedious to post for cats that have, like are gonna be going quickly, but they're cool for cats who are having a hard time getting adopted. So like I posted it for Bella and for Xena and for Pepsi and a couple of other ones that have been here for a while. Um, they're like little like YouTube shorts. They look like TikTok videos. Um, and they are at the top of the page. So when you like go onto our website and you click on the cat that you're interested in and it brings you to their full bio with it has like their age and their cost and all their likes and dislikes and all the photos that you send in that has like the full scroll at the top of that page, it has like a little video, um, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So hopefully um, that helps. Um, Abby and George is saying it's asking for a passcode. <laughs> Do you want to, I don't know. Do you want to message her or figure it out? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so those videos are pretty cool. Um, hopefully they'll help. I posted Bella and Zena on like Sunday and they are getting adopted this weekend. So, Yay. yeah. Yay. I don't know if it had anything to do with the videos, but I know that like, if I came across an adult cat's bio and it had a video of them playing, mm -hmm. that's gonna make me apply more. So mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't super hard. It's just really tedious. So I'm glad that we figured out how to do it. Um, and- I I think yeah. it's hard to apply for a cat if you only really see a picture. 
especially yeah. if it's an older cat. You Agreed. know, us who have been around adult cats, it's different. But if you think all along, oh, I want a kitten, you know, maybe you don't even look at the adult cats if you all see the picture. So that's awesome. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it helps. So we'll see. But if you get, if you have a cat that's been around for a while and I don't, um, ask you for a video, just feel free to send it to me and remind me like, Hey, put this on the website. Cause I might forget that it exists after a while. <laughs> um, cause we have like so many things that exist. Um, so there's just like one more thing on my list, but, um, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, and so once it's on the website and somebody clicks apply, we have a whole application um, that they have to go through. We prefer the digital applications because digital applications allow them to automatically put themselves in our computer system. Now I intended to show you guys our computer system just as an idea so that you knew like what I was talking about when I said put us into our computer system, but it's more difficult to screen share and I don't have like all my things. I'm not going to make Abby figure it out like on the whim. <laughs> but basically, maybe I'll edit it into the YouTube video. But basically, um, it um, is through Pet Established. And when they fill out an application, it saves the application to their chart. And it also creates like a, con a contact for them. And in that contact, it has like all their personal information. Um, you guys all have a contact in there as well because you're fosters. So your contact also has your application and then all the cats that you have ever fostered listed underneath your name. Um, and it'll say like if they've been adopted or if they're still in care. And that way we can like track. It's like this whole computer system, like a whole web. It's really cool. Um, and so once they fill out the application and they're in our system, it makes it much easier to apply the um, adoption contract once that happens and register the microchip. So it's just like two clicks um, and really easy done because they already put in the information for us. Um, once they, once the application gets to my email, I look it over generally and see if it looks like weird. Some of you guys have seen, like, I'll send you ones and I'm like, this is a little bit odd. Maybe you should like ask this question or ask that question. Um, or it'll say, you know, that they plan for indoor outdoor. Um, and then I have like a full conversation with them on email. Um, and we talk about indoor outdoor and either like they accidentally clicked it or um, they didn't realize that it was a bad thing because they've always had indoor outdoor cats. Their parents did that that way. So we just go over the whole application. Once you have the app, you call. And then during the call conversation, um, I guess I'll say like how I do it. And then if you guys wanna talk about like, we'll kind of like open the discussion up like how you guys do. I open it up by just introducing myself. Like my name is Melissa, I'm with Southerners and the Cat Rescue. Usually I have to leave a voicemail because I have an out of state zip code. So they call me back. And then um, afterwards when they call me back, then I just let them know like, you know, I'm Peanuts Foster. I, you know, got your application. I wanted to go over it with you. Um, I wanted to just tell you his story and how he came to be with me. And then if you have any questions, please let me know. And we can talk all about what you're looking for and if you feel like he fits. And then I tell them like the whole story about how he came to me. So, you know, Peanut is from Texas. So I'll tell them about the Texas story or, you know, if they were like a bottle baby, I'll tell them all about that. And then I tell them about their personality. Um, if I have a favorite kitten and they're applying for the favorite, I'll be like, don't tell the others, but this one's my favorite. Um, and then they always love that because they're like, oh, I'm applying for the favorite one. Um, and then, um, then we usually just like chat about the cat and the personality. And I ask like, you know, what are you looking for? I see on your application that you're looking for, um, 
you know, a long haired cat, but he's short hair, you know, is that going to be a problem? Are you going to be disappointed? Um, you know, I see that you're looking for a male. That's great. Um, cause he is, um, I see that you're looking for a kitty. That's a snuggler and makes biscuits. That's awesome. He, he loves to make biscuits. Um, but I will tell you that he's only a four snuggler and, you know, go over that and like what I mean by that. And, you know, that he only does it after he like runs around and is totally crazy. And then it really stirs up conversation. That way they are fully aware of what goes on with the cat. Um, what are you guys, what are your conversations like? Can I go? Go, yeah. I've actually got a list of questions that I ask potential adopters. It just I helps that. me organize more than anything else because if I go off the fly, I'll forget things. So making sure that they know when the adoptions are scheduled for, um, what the adoption fee is, those kinds of things. And, you know, making sure they know it's a 20 year commitment and trying to see if they are totally new cat adopters or, or whether they've had an experience with cats before. So just a you know, range of things like that. I like to put it down on, in a list and go through them. I think that's really good. Yeah, definitely touching base on like the long commitment. Um, and like, yeah, I do appreciate always making sure that at least at the end of the conversation that you're making sure before you send them to me to schedule the adoption appointment that you say like, Melissa is going to contact you to schedule an adoption appointment. Are you aware that it's, you know, just to make sure you know, it's $135 adoption fee. This is what it covers. Um, you know, it's all listed on our website, so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But as we all know, it is sometimes. And they're like, what? I thought it was free. Um, Sarah had a bunch of those this summer. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I know Kathy's pretty intricate, but she might be cooking dinner while she's listening. So um, anybody else want to chime in? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I've never really had a call with somebody who had then did not adopt the kitten. So does that happen frequently that people decide, well, it really isn't for me after all? Because, you know, um, it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to have a difficult conversation in a way because, you know, you love the kittens and you want to paint them in the best light, but you know, some kittens are a lot shyer than others and, you know, they're kind of quirky. So, you know, I you want to make sure you yeah. address it and then they don't adopt a kitten or a cat that they don't want. I have straight up called people and said, hey, I know that you applied to adopt Peanut, but Peanut is not a great fit for what you're looking for. I see that you've got three kids. Um, I did have my friend's kids over last weekend and he is terrified. He hid underneath the bed the entire time. Um, he didn't come out for two days, you know, like something okay. or like, you know, I see that you've got dogs and Peanut won't even come out into the living room with my dog who is a gentle giant those kinds of things. Um, okay. And then when I think that they're not a good fit, I will present a different option. Okay. So I'll say like Peanut's brother on the other hand, or, you know, Anne's kitten mm -hmm. is great. Um, you know, she listed that, you know, you know, that Fluffy loves kids and Fluffy snuggles a ton with kids. So why don't I have Anne call you and talk to you about Fluffy? And then they're usually really appreciative. Okay. And then on the business end of things, we're also keeping that adopter within the rescue, which is. And they're less likely, likely to return a kitten back. later, which we've had a lot of. They're less likely to return that kitten. Yeah. So being so does, honest is fine. Yeah. So does the application then ask, what are you looking for in a cat mm. or kitten? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, they apply for a specific says. cat after they read the bio, but then they have a chance to also say, this is what I'm really looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll even read you kind of the, um, I'll read you since I've got an application here, um, but people don't fill it out all the way, nor do they read bios because they want the pretty cat, right? 
So, um, and unfortunately it sucks, but I, we have a very long question that asks. <laughs> and so it says, describe your ideal cat. Please do not just put kitten. Um, okay. This is a spot to tell us what personality will do best in your home, energy level, hair type, social attributes that you are looking for in your new pet. Hmm. Okay. And so in that section is where they should be describing. And I will say the best applications are the ones that take that whole paragraph and they are like, they write out everything and sometimes it matches the, like it matches exactly what, like who they applied for. Sometimes it doesn't. And then, but we can use that blurb that they wrote and say like, oh, but it matches this cat. Mm -hmm. And then we can say like, hey, this cat would be great for you. Like I had somebody earlier today that applied for coconut and their application is great for him, but he's taken um but they wrote a really good paragraph and it matches diamond so I emailed them and they suggested that we apply their application to diamond instead because I think that they would be great adopters for diamond so I'm waiting to hear back and see what their opinions are on that cool that's good to know sometimes I've had people who are looking for a chill cat and a kitten is not usually that and <laughs> I end up directing them to adults. And I think I have a, a couple adults adopted because I directed them to adults. You have. Yeah. Um, you guys have both had quite a few adults adopted at PetSmart. Do you want to talk about like that conversation that you have with people? Like when we're um, like when we're at PetSmart, what we talk about with the people there? Yeah. Like to make sure that they're not going to return those cats, like yeah. Chloe and Ethel and stuff. Yeah, I know. I've, I've gotten really lucky somehow with my adult cats getting adopted at events. Um, I, I just let them know. I, I usually start with, I'm, I apologize in advance because adult cats do not show well. I don't love bringing my adult cats to the events because they're, um, they don't do well there, but the ones that I have brought did really well. And even Chloe and Ethel who were shaking in their boots got adopted. So um, I talk about how um, really focusing on bringing that adult cat home. Um, I guess that would be after they decide to adopt, but um, making sure that they're aware that the cat might take a little while to come out of its shell. Um, it can take months and I, I really drive that home that the cat could take months to come out, you know, and hang out with them because they're, it's a big transition. Um, describing really well, because adult cats are easy because you know their personalities, unlike kittens that can turn into anything. Um, that, that this kitten's cats live with me for a long time. This is what they like, this is what they dislike. Um, I think we have a really good grasp on adult cat personalities. So that makes it almost easier than a kitten because you can tell them like this cat will sit in your lap and love you forever whereas a kitten could be anything you know they could turn into anything um so I think that makes adult cats special and I let people know that too um I don't know anything else uh I think it's important to talk about quirks yeah um and to be honest about like faults Mm -hmm. like not only Um, like Christine was saying that you want to paint this kitty in the best light possible. Um, but I think sometimes the best conversations come from being honest with people. Um, like I just adopted out Jeeves and Jeeves is like an ankle grabber in the kitchen, um, because my boyfriend is horrible and feeds lunch meat to the cats. Um, so Jeeves has learned that. And I was really honest with them. I told them like, he knows the sound of the refrigerator opening and I'm so sorry. I've tried really, really hard to like scratch this habit and to like stop this from happening, but there's only so much that I can do in my own home. (laughs) Um, especially when there's multiple of us and there's somebody else doing the bad habit. Um, I'm talking shit about you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, had someone, I had someone interview like was 
curious about Judy when Judy was on the floor at PetSmart. And I was straight up like, she's bites and she's mean like 80% of the time, but she's great the other 20%. And they were like, that's really great. You know, and, and now, they're, now they're her foster. So her long-term yeah. foster. Um, they, saw, yeah. they, saw, they saw her great attributes just like I did. She's an awful cat, but God, I love her. Yeah. Um, and she would have adopted, but Judy developed some GI issues that may, that may potentially be lymphoma. So yeah. Um, we're, we don't want her to, to have to adopt and take on that financial burden. So, so yes, being super honest, um, you know, the cat I had, um, who was adopted last week, one of my cats, Bandit, Bandit was adopted last weekend. Yeah. And, um, she's like, she was actually more friendly at adoptions than she's ever been at home. Like she understood the assignment to get adopted <laughs> and was like, anyone that walked by, she was like, love me. And I let them know that I was like, she's really great here. I don't know who this cat is though. <laughs> Cause she's affectionate at home, but she's not like that. It was ridiculous. She was, um, it was, it was really, really over loving. And then I let them know too, that like they tried to pick her up for the picture and she was like really uncomfortable. And I, I picked her up and I showed them I'm like, she doesn't, her previous adopter didn't like, you know, she had told him that I told him that she had told me that she doesn't like being picked up. Um, but that could have been pain from the UTI or You can, do it too, you can do it too soon so just kind of the corks you know, like i have core cut out for anybody else oh am i there did she cut out for anybody else or was it just me yeah she cut out for a second my grandma tried to call me and i hung up on her for you people so. <laughs> she could be dying <laughs> um basically uh <clears throat> being honest like Cora I have she's not adoptable yet but hey she she only lets you pet her belly when you when she tells you you know because she'll bite you otherwise so it's (laughs) I I don't know just being honest uh, making sure that they're ready to yeah yeah and I feel like all we're doing is talking about like the negative things but I think it's just so important to talk about the negative things um with adopters even though that like with kittens which is the majority of what we end up fostering with SACR, there's not a lot of negative things. Um, there is, but they're not like horrible negative things. They're more like teenager kind of habits, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. always good to discuss those habits with people and to make, you know, after you've talked the cat up and said like, you know, I love this cat. He watches Dexter with me every single Sunday and we we love playing video games every night and he like tracks the screen and like all the cute things that you say like but he also grabs your ankles while you're trying to make sandwiches um (laughs) so I think it's just so important to like make sure that you're being honest um and in all honesty like a lot of times people people end up thinking it's funny um and then they end up admitting their bad habits to you and they go oh yeah we're lunch meat people too um we think our cat lunch meat don't tell anybody and I'm like <laughs> it's fine <laughs> but at least like at least he won't be like alone in your house and he'll still get his snacks um Kathy said something in the chat she said yes cooking dinner I knew she was um <laughs> Couldn't get the volume on my phone for some reason. Anyway, yes, I'll ask and tell probably way too much when talking to applications. Kathy does take a really long time um, to talk to applications. Like uh, I've told her before, like don't get stuck on the phone for hours because she will. Um, But I think that also is a benefit to Kathy because she's had nothing but great adopters. um, And I don't think we've had any returns to be honest. uh not that like people who have returns are bad but like I think like Kathy will the people who seem like they might return Kathy ends up like just scaring them off uh like she makes them think about all their life choices before she lets them adopt um <laughs> what I love right. like they they're thinking about the next like six six to nine months of their life and like if the cat is going to fit into it before they actually adopt and I love that because (laughs) they end up like learning so she ends up learning so much about the families and I think it's really sweet 
Um, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> Um, to sit on the phone for an hour every time I have a kitten. Um, but I love I'm, that she does. <laughs> I'm just going to interject with my style of like interview here. I'm super lazy fair about it. Um, I call them most of the time, like you said, Melissa, they don't answer. Um, I shoot them a text. Uh, I usually like, I'll use, I'll leave a voicemail, but usually they just send me straight to, they're like, your call has been forwarded. And then, but I have a text that I have written up that says, hi, this is Amber for Southern Arizona Cat Rescue. Um, I have your application here. You were interested in Fluffy. Um, whenever you have a minute, can you give me a call or we can text about, you know, questions you have about the cat, about the adoption process, about anything. And then they usually text or call back. It depends on how old they are. Um, and then I just discuss it, like the whole thing. Like, this is the cat, the cat is great. And then um, I discussed how it all goes down at, at um, PetSmart. And then I don't mind people coming over and meeting the cat before Saturday. I know mm -hmm. some people don't want to do that. Um, I do it masked. And I sometimes I'll do it like on my patio or in my cat room. Um, you don't have to do it ever. But I'll I let think people come over. important to remember it is considered a business venture. So if they do get injured on your property and they sue you, your home insurance does not cover that claim. So that yeah. is just the one big thing to remember um, is it a when you are. Charity? Yes, we are considered, we, we are an LLC. So we are a business. But remember yeah, that. I think that that's just the one thing to like keep in mind. Yeah. Even though I do love doing them at home and I used to do it a lot but stopped because of COVID but yeah also like if you own your home and have assets even if you don't probably like you know yeah fix your rickety porch before you like let people step on it yeah the bite dog that bites got killed so we're not worried about it anymore <laughs> so we need to have them sign a liability form before they enter the door <laughs> Or just, or just don't have people over to your house. <laughs> um, yeah. Kathy also said, uh, <clears throat> she did correct me. Ruth did get adopted last year. It was an impulse adoption. And they scratched and bit her. And then they were returned 24 hours later. When that happens, there's something wrong with the animal. because, Or there's something wrong with the person, to be honest. I'll be real like the only time that we've ever had returns for aggression it just seems like there's just been like something weird about the person like why is this animal that is like the nicest thing to all of us and all of these strangers at the event bit you when you got home like what did you do and then they never tell us and they never want to answer the question. They never want to like mm. tell us like what happened or the circumstances. They're just like, get the cat out of my house. No. Um, and this is only Ruth and Esme are the only ones that have ever happened. Um, and Kathy also says, yes, I've done the same as Melissa. This tiny kitten is not a good fit. Um, this older kitty could be good for you. And she said that she's had a few recently who acted like they didn't actually do the application. Um, I agree. That is weird. I think, I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, but Kathy has had a couple applications recently that have acted like they didn't fill out the application. Like she called them and they were like, who are you? <laughs> like, what? I don't know. So either we've got like some person like stealing information and like filling out false apps, or we've got people who went behind their significant other's backs, filled out application. And then when their SO figured out that they filled out an application, they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah. Um, um, Sarah, do you have questions specifically that you ask or? Uh, so normally I try to think of something that has been an issue in the past. Like um, this one person who's like, oh, she's just so meowy. And I'm like, okay, 
if I know that they're getting one kiss and I'm like, just so you know, they're alone for the first time, they're going to be loud. Um, and so I tried to hit home on that to be like, this is normal. Um, like, and so at this point, now that I've started doing that, I've actually had fewer issues uh, with that, except for that person this week who they actually, I went over all that stuff and they're like, you answered some of our questions. I was like, cool. And then they're like, psych, we're not ready for a cat. I'm like, what? Okay. Um, oh, I forgot we have a vacation planned in two months. Never mind. Yeah. Actually, also why I said no to somebody earlier this week is she's like, oh, I want to travel with the kitty. And I'm like, this would not be the cat for you. Um, yeah, that's fair. Some cats and, do well traveling and others do not. That's why it's Holder and it was for Eleanor. And I'm like, I don't know how she's acting so far. I don't think it's going to work. So who knows if she's going to go for somebody else. But um, yeah, so those are a lot of the questions is mistakes that I've, I've made in the past I try really hard to learn from them and so I make sure I don't think they're mistakes make like make sure people know I don't think they're mistakes I wouldn't call them mistakes I would say you're learning from previous adopters who weren't prepared to adopt a cat oh I guess (laughs) uh but yeah so I just make sure that like whenever I have somebody who wants a single cat I'm like okay if you don't have any animals gonna meow a lot and even if you do have animals that they have to get used to each other so he's gonna meow a lot anyways um so yeah that's that's the main thing is I just tried to indicate what might happen that yes this is normal and I also just try like if I think of anything any little thing I'm like I'm happy to answer your questions when they actually contact me about stuff compared to if they just kind of blindside me me like sec I wasn't ready I'm like oh you didn't sound like that was an issue um yeah but it happens it does I mean it's important to remember like it's something that we did wrong um it's just it happens returns happen um and they suck but like returns happen um it's just unfortunately a part of rescue um and it's the most important part is that they come back to us so that we can find them homes and not randomly dropped off the humane society. <laughs> we find out it's much later. God. So, you know. Um, uh, does anybody have any other questions or big points or things that they mentioned that we didn't talk about? Um, so at the end of your conversation with adopters on the phone, ideally it'll kind of your own version of, of this conversation, it'll ideally just go, you know, if you think they're a good, let's pretend you think they're a good fit, right? I really think you're a great fit for Peanut. You know, we've discussed his personality, his quirks, um, and your home. If you feel the same way and you think he would be a great fit for your house, um, I'd really like to invite you to our adoption event. It is this Saturday. We do adoptions by appointment only every 15 minutes between 11 and 2. Is that something that you would want to do is schedule an appointment to come and meet him? If you schedule an appointment, you're basically calling dibs. So I'm not gonna accept any other applications on him all week. I'm gonna hold him tight so that you can meet him. And if you fall in love with him in person, just like you have over the phone, then you can take him home. And they usually go, yeah, please, what time? What time can I do it? Please don't schedule the time on your own because most likely I already have a booked schedule <laughs> because I'm also scheduling for everybody else. Um, just tell them, do you have any restrictions between 11 and two? Um, a reason that you wouldn't be able to be here for some reason. Um, and then let, let me know, you know, Hey, Sarah is adopting peanut. Um, it's a go. She 
can't get to PetSmart until after 12 because of work, but after that, she's good to go. And then I'll, I'll email Sarah and do the um, congratulations for adopting email, which I'm sure you guys have all seen by now because you've been tagged in it um, on the Facebook group. It has tons of information about um, how to pay by via PayPal, the adoption fee, the address, the name of the cat, it'll have the time. Um, it'll ask if the time is okay with them and has a question mark, which you would think as a grown human adult, the question mark usually means that it was a question that you are intended to reply to. However, that is not necessarily how everybody feels. So just when you tell people, she's gonna email you with an option for a time, please respond to the email if that time works. If it doesn't, respond to the email and let her know. At least then that way, because once we get the email, then I take the pet off of the website. If I don't get the email back, I'm like, oh, the person ghosted us, which has happened before, where like they say, yeah, I want to adopt. Can and I then I email them. And then we literally never hear from them ever again. And they block the foster mm -hmm. on the phone. So, because they just don't want to tell you to your face that they don't want to adopt your cat. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine if you don't want to adopt the cat. No, 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 no. Come here. <laughs> or they can't afford the 135 and they don't want to tell you because they feel guilty or they feel upset by it or embarrassed. And that's okay if you can't afford it. It's okay. Um, so, you. come in. Yeah. So, we, we don't take them down typically until they have been responded to. So, the quicker, the better. Um, and then I can get them on the schedule and have everything set up. The email also has like a ton of links on like how to introduce the cats. It gives them a link to the foster group or not to the foster group, to the adopters group. So they can like join and see all the pictures of the happy adopters, all the fun stuff. Um, and then if for some reason they're like, oh, I can't make Saturday. I work every single Saturday, no exceptions. If they have a spouse or a partner that is also going to be, well, if they have a spouse, yeah, a spouse or a partner that's also going to be adopting the cat, can that spouse or partner come? That would be great. Um, try and find alternatives. If it's an absolute no go and nobody else can come, that would be like the owner to this cat. Then let us know and we'll pick a date outside of Saturday. It's just not ideal because then one of us has to go on our off day and we're already working full-time jobs and volunteering wow. and we do this stuff every evening and every weekend and all the things so we're already all tired so to add one more thing on an off day is just one more thing so we try not to but if we have to we absolutely will to let them go home um you can also tell people when you're on the phone with them that if they are planning on buying things at PetSmart to wait until the adoption because they're gonna get an adoption booklet. Um, we also mentioned that in the email, but people don't read my emails. Um, so yeah, I always remind people, I'm gonna send you a ton of information by email. Read the email, it's your homework before you get adopt, before you adopt. But that's because I wrote the email, so I feel passionately about it. So, um, but I think it's good um, to mention that it's important to read, but at least it's important to reply um, and important to just try not to pick a time with them beforehand. So that way I can make sure it fits into our schedule. Otherwise, Abby and Amber get overwhelmed with the amount of people that show up at the same time. Because if we are double booked, then it's crazy. And it's a lot. Um, are there any questions about like that part at all? Or ways that you found are, are easier to have that conversation? Melissa, it's Joy. I was thinking, what if you copied the foster on the email you're sending the adopter to? I've never, I mean, we, you, you posted like the link of what it looks like, but it might be fun to have the interactive portion so we can see how it works. 
it's really just I email it to them and they respond, yes, I'll be there. Too bad we don't have a way to embed a link where they click like for your like your doctor's appointment that says yes or no. <laughs> I know. I'm sure I could, but we'd have to pay for it and it's totally not worth it. Like all they have to do is click the freaking reply button. <laughs> like it's just like it's not that hard, but people think I it is. I so. them all of mine that they have to reply or else their kitten will not be at adoptions. Yeah. So they have to reply I'm that way they know if you're not, if you're not coming. <laughs> yeah, it's important that they reply. But I mean, you guys know I bother you if they haven't replied. And then that way we can say like, hey, is that time going to work for you or no? Because you haven't replied to the email. And then they go, what email? And then I say, check your spam. And then they go, oh, OK, that email. So unfortunately, we go to spam sometimes, which sucks. but. It happens, but yeah, I won't, I'm not going to clog your, I, it's a good idea, but I wouldn't clog your guys's email inbox with it. Cause they literally just reply with yes, thank you. And that's it. There's no like chain or questions beyond that. Cause if there is questions beyond that, I usually direct them to you guys because they're questions about like the cat's personality. And I'm like, didn't you already have this conversation before you decided to adopt? And so I just say, if you have more questions about the cat's personality or you want pictures um, prior to adoption, just, you know, text your foster. And then I usually will send them your phone number because they already have it. So that way I'm like, here you go. <laughs> and I'm like, if you have any questions about like the logistics of adopting, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to, to ask, like to answer them. Um, Joy, uh, do you have any, we kind of talked a little bit before about like anything specific that you ask people that helps you feel like more comfortable or like a specific conversation style that you go about when you're talking to adopters on the phone? Um, you know, I always, with especially with my younger adopters, since we see a lot of college students, I all, I mean, I straight up ask them, I can't, bluntly I'm like you do understand that this is like an 18 year commitment and do you have a plan if you have to move you know your apartment right now takes that takes the cat but what happens when you graduate in you know two three years whatever what's your plan for the cat this is you know this is a commitment this isn't you know something you're gonna leave behind and a lot of you know and then I wait to kind of see what their what their statement is I haven't had any that have really made me uncomfortable like one girl's like you know, oh, I'm going to introduce it to my mom's cats. When I graduate, I'm going to go home for a couple of months. I'm already, you know, my mom's happy to let, let my cat stay with them while I get settled in a new place. So like, I want to make sure they have a contingency plan and that they understand the long-term ramifications um, of the pet. The older clients, I always get a little nervous, especially when it's a kitten, just because I'm always like scared. What if that person ends up in a care facility. What's going to happen to your cat? I think somebody mm -hmm. just tried to eat Mushu in my living room. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of quiz them. I'm like, what are you, you know, I know they applied for my cat, but I'm like, what are you looking for in a pet? Like, yeah. what is your household expectation of this cat? <laughs> and then I wait to kind of see what they're looking for. And if they start talking and then the cat suddenly, my cat doesn't fit that description. I'll be like, you know, that doesn't really sound like a good fit, but let me point you to some kitties that fit that description a little better. Because I read the other bios when you post them just to see what the other cats like personalities would appear to look for style. So just kind of knowing what else we have in inventory if your cat's not a good fit. I think that's I think those are good. We didn't really talk about the um, like the old, like the older adopters and the younger adopters. Um, somebody's David, David, you need to mute. We can hear you. Oh, here I can mute him. Yeah. Oh, he got it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah. The younger and the older adopters. <laughs> like I said, I'm always my fear is always the apartment people because yeah, that they're gonna move. And they're going to find out they can't, you know, then they're not going to want to put all the effort into paying all those deposits and stuff again to move this cat to another apartment. So understanding that there's a financial 
side of it. And then I always ask them if they've asked their, if they've, if they've cleared the cat to be moved into their apartment, have they already talked to their apartment complex management about the pet? Yeah, because if they haven't even asked them, they just applied for a cat, then this is probably going to be a, well, you're going to have to wait until you've gotten it cleared by management and paid for your fee. Because I don't want them to get the cat home and then the management be like, well, you weren't approved for a cat and now here comes the cat back again at no fault of the cat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to get off of, nope, I can't. Apparently, I can't get back on the video. Sorry guys, I am technologically. I could still see you. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I just couldn't see you guys. Um, out in her chair right now. I think it's super important to remind you guys that um, like kind of while we're talking about like the older adopters and the younger adopters, it's super important to remind you guys, not that any of you guys are judgmental um, because I think we inadvertently end up weeding out judgmental people um, and ju like judgmental fosters. Like we don't do it on purpose, but they don't end up staying with us very long because they don't feel, they don't like it because I tell them not to be judgmental. <laughs> um, like, nobody's good enough. But, for <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, but, I think it's important to remember that we've actually been like recognized for being really open um, and recognized for being, um, oh gosh, what did they call it? I had it on my computer, but my computer died. So, um, but like we fostered change and we foster a welcome, oh yeah, they said that we fostered a welcoming atmosphere in, in the community. And so um, I, we, yeah, super inclusive. Um, so. I was asked to speak at a Maddie's Fund conference um, at the end of October, which I did. Um, and that was super cool because um, we, I like basically just got to do like a Zoom call with like a bunch of other rescue leaders. Um, and PAC is actually the one who nominated us to come and talk. Um, and so Danielle Harris at PAC, when they said, can you give us the name of a rest, like a private rescue um, that you know of that fosters a welcoming and inclu inclusive atmosphere? She said that we were the first on their mind. Um, so for a big place like PAC to recognize that we're known for being inclusive. Um, and what she means by that is that we don't like turn people away for their age. We don't turn people away for um, you know, the type of life that they live. We don't judge people um, for pretty much anything. Um, we don't do home checks, um, which I think is something that a lot of rescues still do, but um, is a little bit invasive to your home. Um, I don't want people snooping around my house. <laughs> um, I already have you guys all doing it on Saturday. <laughs> Um, and I don't mind that, but I don't want like random people coming and judging me. Um, but yeah, so anyway, they said that we were super cool and they really liked us and we got to go and have like a full conversation and like talk, I had to like put a whole like PowerPoint thing together about like why we were nominated and like how we put everything together and basically I just talked how about how cool you guys all were and how about like how cool all of our fosters were and how I thought that like the only reason that we were looked at in such a good light was because we attract fosters who are very open and honest people and are very non-judgmental people and a lot of the other rescues were like what you guys don't do home checks what you guys like allow college students to adopt and I was like yeah as long as they have a plan like why not I was 18 when I got my first cat you know a lot of you guys probably were and you probably still have that cat or it passed away at very old age <laughs> you know so. we, we we rescued a dog 
with a home check. And it was, it was very invasive and awkward to have somebody do that. And I've talked to so many fosters that like, well, we applied with such and such place and they denied us. Why? Like you said, they wanted to do a home check. They wanted to come. They wanted to, they didn't want to give to a college student. They didn't want to, for whatever reason, like they would disqualify people for the strangest things. It's like, you're never going to move your animals if you don't take that leap of faith once in a while. Yeah. So the, I think she's the CEO or like, she's like the head of the board of directors or something for Maddie's fund. If you don't know what Maddie's fund is, just Google it. It's a really large, um, rescue uh, basically the rescue organization or like a funding organization that like groups all the rescues together to like help us like fundraise and stuff and like it's kind of hard to explain but it's really cool they're really well known across the world um and the lead lady for maddie's fund when i was originally having my zoom call with her when she invited us to do this chat and I talked to her about home checks. She said that she was denied for a rescue dog in Colorado. And obviously the people didn't Google her name when she applied, um, because if you did, it would pop up. And she said that they came out to her home and they denied her because their like 18 acre property doesn't have a fence. And she was applying to like adopt like a herding breed. And so she thought it would be great if the herding breed had like 18 acres to like run around on. And she wasn't planning on just like letting the dog loose, but also like, she was like, okay. I mean, if I don't like, okay. <laughs> like clearly this lady like knows what she's doing. Um, and if you had talked to her, you would know she knows what she's doing or expressed concern. But instead, they just immediately denied um, without having a conversation. So that's another, like, we don't immediately deny for indoor, outdoor, or immediately deny for declining. I send them links, and I send them emails to educate. And some people email back, you're a bitch. I'm keeping my cat indoor, outdoors. And, like, obviously, those people get denied. But then, like, obviously, some people email back and go, I had no idea that coyotes lived in town. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I've been driving down Grant and I saw one carrying a cat in its mouth. Like, yeah, they live in town. So yeah, home checks are weird. <laughs> and you can end up denying really cool people for stupid things. So yeah, thanks for bringing up that topic, Joy. I appreciate it. <laughs> You know, Melissa, I have to tell you, I've found for most people, if you engage the uh, potential adopters and send them like a video of the kitty or the picture and they have other kitties in the home, 95% of the time they will start texting you back pictures and you will kind of inadvertently get a view of how their cat setup is in their home. Yeah. Like you. it's so easy to get people <laughs> to just like engage you without realizing that you're engaging them in a way to kind of see what their life is like. But I'll send videos of like a kitten's playing in the bathroom. And the next thing I know, I'm getting, oh, here's my giant cat tree. And here's my yep. other kitty. And so you can kind of work that too, just by making it, oh, let me send you a video of the kitty that you're interested in. And then bam, now you've got something at least to kind of go off of. <laughs> I agree. You kind of get your home check that way. Or even just by doing a video chat. I love video chatting and you can video chat if you don't have like an iPhone, you can video chat on Facebook Messenger. So I just tell them like, do you have Facebook? And they go, yeah. And I'm like, okay, do you want to video chat on Facebook Messenger? And then we do and they get to, you know, we FaceTime and I introduce myself and then we have the entire phone call while I'm playing with the cat with like a wand toy. And so like while we're talking, they're watching the cat play. what is that abby android phones can do if you have somebody else who has an android phone you guys can you can video call each other too yeah motley, motley decided to text you that guys oh thanks yeah and i think iphones i think they were supposed to be getting an app where they could they could facetime androids i think they were trying yeah. to add that as an option yeah i mean just zoom i say everybody's got zoom now <laughs> yeah zoom google meet 
Facebook Messenger, like find a way, super easy. And then you kind of get a little peek into their house without actually getting a peek into their house. You could see if they've got boxes stacked <laughs> to the ceiling. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any last questions or things that they want to bring up before we like end the recording and everything? Thanks, Abby, for recording and saving our butts because my computer's dead. Of course. <laughs> Much appreciated. Thank you guys all for joining and having a good conversation. I'm excited to post it for everybody to see. Much appreciated. You are welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Abby, I will send you our YouTube login information so you can upload it. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>